Yeah, that's really, really weird, seeing the sound of the steering wheel kind of move on its own like that. Uh, I like the, the, the notice on the steering wheel, too. says, do not touch steering wheel or pedals. The vehicle will pull over um, as sort of a warning to anyone that might try to mess with the, uh, the driverless car. Here we are, riding in a minivan with nobody in the front seat, with pedestrians and cyclists and other vehicles out on a public road. It's a surreal experience. says, good morning, Waymo Rider. Our destination is Baby K's Cajun Kitchen. It's asking me to start the ride, so let's do that. Heading to Baby K's Cajun Kitchen. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. All right, so we're pulling out of this, uh, this parking lot right now and onto uh, Public Road. And then we just made a right-hand turn and changed lanes into the center lane. It's very natural. So here we come some, some construction right here, which is uh, very challenging for self-driving cars. And it kind of handled it with really no problem at all. It slowed down a little bit. Now it's changing lanes and just kind of breeze past that construction site there as if uh, you know it was being driven by a human, quite honestly. And this is our destination. Nothing really eventful to speak of. Uh, now it's coming back right now and we're gonna take it for a ride back to where we came from, which is the watershed. I'll get it first, if you don't mind. All our stuff is still here. That's great. You can trust these robots. This time I'm gonna press the button up here on the headliner, which is uh, another way that we can get the car to get going. And that was a pretty nice acceleration there. Not uh, as cautious as you might maybe expect. It was felt very organic. And it looks like we're gonna be turning into the left turning lane as we approach our destination. Oh, it stopped for the pigeons. You love to see it. You absolutely love to see them stopping for the pigeons. No other company is testing fully driverless vehicles at the scale and speed that Waymo is. The company has trained its AI with a vast data set of images and driving scenarios. It has a highly detailed high def map of the whole area down to the centimeter. It took Waymo a decade to get to this point, where it felt confident enough in the safety of its technology to pull drivers out of the driver's seat. But you know, only for a tightly controlled 50 square mile area, mostly suburban and mostly dry conditions with a pretty basic road layout. And these vehicles aren't totally alone in the wilderness. Waymo has a team of remote employees that watch the real time feed from each of the vehicle's eight cameras and can help with the touch of a button if the software runs into a tricky spot and needs a human eye to figure it out. I mean, the level of production required for each of these driverless vehicles is immense. Sensors, cameras, compute, AI, remote assistance operators, fleet managers. Experts estimate that each self-driving test vehicle could cost $400,000 alone. And that's just taking into account the sensors and compute. Is all of that really worth it? Waymo seems to think so. I mean, human beings are terrible drivers. The vast majority of vehicle crashes, like over 90%, are because of mistakes made by human drivers. Self-driving cars could be safer, but we really just don't know yet. There just aren't enough of them on the road to really prove that out. So we'll have to wait until they bust out beyond this tiny section of suburban Arizona and to a much larger and more dangerous and more complex world before we know whether self-driving cars are really worth all this effort.